What's up OGs? Welcome back and in today's video I want to talk about how to spot a good coach. So before I get started I just want to apologize for not posting anything in the past week and the reason for that is because uh, last Saturday was actually my birthday, my 40th birthday and my judo coach insisted on throwing me a party. I didn't think much of it uh, I spent the day with the wife and, you know, obviously walked my dog like always. And that was enough for me. I was, I was ready to spend a quiet evening at home. But since the judo coach insisted, then, you know, what can you do, right? So I ended up with the whole judo team uh, at my coach's house. And we, we drank and then we went out and we kept on drinking. And anyways, that dragged on the whole night. And that was... So pretty much Sunday was like kaput, you know, for me. Now, the thing is, lately I've been using my weekends uh, to take care of all, all the YouTube activities, all the videos, right? Because during the week, like I'm in the gym, I'm working as a trainer and things are going well. So I'm quite busy during the week. So I don't really have time. So I do everything on the weekend. But if I miss a whole weekend, which was the case last weekend, then I'm pretty much done. And then after that, like Monday to Friday, I'm in the grind. It's like I hardly have time to, uh, uh, you know, to, to think things up, to, to do any of the videos and stuff like that. So I really have to take care of everything on the weekend. So now that being said, I'm back and uh, hope you guys didn't miss me too much. So let's get right into it. Now, how do you spot a good coach or how do you get a good coach, right? Well, actually a, a good coach, I mean, you have to spot them first and then you can just register. And, and train at the club, right? But in my opinion, here's here's what it is. The coach has to be competent, first of all. So competent meaning not necessarily a world champion or, or anything like that, but he has to know what he's doing, all right? He has to be at, at a pretty uh, decent level. You know, let's say on a scale of, uh, of zero to 10, right? Zero obviously being bad, 10 would be like Olympic, you know, multiple, like, you know, Olympic medalist, okay? But now, I think you would have to be at least, at least a seven, seven and above, all right? Seven, eight, that's, that's good. So in terms of a technical skill. So that's number one. Number two is, well, he has to know how to teach, right? Because not everybody knows how to teach. I mean, you could be the best, uh, I'm just using judo as an example here, but this, this could apply to, to anything really. Uh, boxing or coach or, or uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu coach or karate coach or whatever, you know? Well, in, in the combat sports, we call them coaches, but I, I'm aware that, you know, in karate, you call them, uh, you know, sensei, uh, master, well, actually, yeah. And, and kung fu with sifu and, and, and all that, you know, they have different titles. But, okay, so competence, and that's the first thing, and then knowing how to teach. But just because somebody is high level, right, doesn't necessarily mean that they know how to teach you right and that's a skill in itself so you have to have that competency but you have to have teaching ability too so that's number two uh, the third thing is I think the coach has to care about you right I might have mentioned this in another video um, but anyways it bears repeating why not you know I think the coach has to care he has to care about about you but here here's here's the caveat though like for a coach to care about you like you have to care about the art the coach and and the club at the same time so what do i mean by that like if you if you walk into to a club right and you're there once in a while uh maybe you're not very uh, implicated maybe you have some sort of bad attitude you come like once a month you you know well obviously you're not you're not you're not really serious you know for whatever reason so of course, if you're not serious, I mean, the coach isn't going to invest his time in you, right? Like if you don't compete, I mean, you don't, you don't have to compete, but I mean, if you just walk into a club and you train, let's say, sparringly, you know, you, you show up like once a week, once every two months or, or whatever, you know, um, don't expect the coach to give a shit about you, really. Like when you're there, you're there, then okay, so you, you know, you're, you, you know, if you're a good uh sparring to have right so to speak let's say you're very good then you serve as a good sparring partner but you know you're not there consistently so it really doesn't matter in the long run so you have to actually care enough to 
and to invest yourself about you have to invest enough time into the club and you actually have to um, care right and caring is showing up in training that's the way I see it so and if, if you care about you know your progression you care about the club and you, you show up then of course the coach is going to uh, with time um, take a liking to you so to speak so he'll start caring about your development more than uh, um, more than usual right so those are the three criterias I don't know what you guys think about that like what's your experience uh, leave them leave it in the comments down below but like my experience with my coach and and this is really my judo coach is the best coach I ever had in, in any any club uh, any sport you know and oh that's another thing too so competency right technical skill competency and technical skill experience obviously right that come and that comes also with experience and of course he has to be able to teach you know he has to have some teaching skills he has to care about you but for him to care about you you have to care about him too so to speak you know not him personally but yeah the club him and, and everything right and what was the other thing i was going to say man i forgot but anyways what do you yeah okay right right so, like what do you guys think? me it's personally the best coach because i've been in like a lot of uh, uh martial arts schools when i was younger i did uh taekwondo and it was very traditional i find like the uh you know the master was very strict and uptight I, which maybe i was younger back then so i perceived them that way but i don't know i never really felt any uh nothing like what you know how, how what i feel now towards my coach right it's more than just my coach we're, we're very good friends too it's one of my i would consider him like a, a brother right so and then of course i did some uh some kung fu and, and that was very distant too right or maybe i was once again younger so my perception of of the relationship and there was so many students also i mean it was a pretty i think it, it still exists today this this kung fu school so really popular school a lot of students so i guess if we have a lot of students it's hard to keep track and of course if people don't stay long enough but i was there for two years so anyways i i, I didn't get that there either um and then i did bjj bjj was where i i really started um having a, a notion of of you know uh being close with the coach and stuff like that but in judo like this 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 really uh blows it out of the water for me personally so what do you guys think? Let me know down below. Um, do you guys, what do you guys think are, are the qualities that make a good coach? You know, like, uh, you know, you could talk about obviously um, the opposite. What are the qualities of a, of, a bad, uh, of a bad coach? You know, bad experiences that you guys might have had. And, and of course, good experiences that you might have had. Or if some of you guys are coaches, then, then what do you think? that uh, how do you go about it you know how do you you know um treat your students like how do you treat the ones who, who are consistent how do you treat the ones who aren't consistent guys who just come and go as they please and don't not really um you know invest themselves that much like um yeah i'd be interested in hearing what uh, what you guys all, all you guys have to say because in the end like i'm i'm a coach now but I'm a trainer, so I'm coaching people uh, for physical fitness, right? But eventually, I'll probably end up being uh, a judo coach myself. So, you know, so I'm seeing everything that I see my coach doing now, it, it's kind of uh, passed down to me. Like I'm learning from him, um, you know, by talking a lot and also by osmosis, right? Osmosis meaning, you know, just being around him and seeing how he does things. And we talk a lot about like what's going on in the club and stuff like that. And I see how he deals with me and then I see how he deals with other students. And it's uh, it's pretty impressive, man. I, I really enjoy it. So I'd like to be a good, great coach one day. So that's why I think, um, you know, I'm making this video, talking about it, you know, thinking out loud, thinking out loud with you guys, of course. And yeah, so let me know down in the comments. So that's it for this video, guys. Uh, so I'm back. I'll be posting uh, regularly now, now that the four, that 40 year old birthday party is done and over with. You can get back to, to normal, right? Okay, so thank you very much for listening guys. Um, leave your comments down below, like the video if you like it. Of course, uh, if you can, share the video to someone who might be interested. 
and sharing is caring, helps me grow the channel. Thank you very much. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.